Hi guys, in this video I will show you how to import data uh, that is structured in CSV files into your backendless database and uh, since this is going to be a larger data set it's not going to be available instantaneously it takes some time for backendless to process it I will also show you how to monitor the progress of import and see uh, if there are any errors or how soon it completes so you'll be able to see all of that the data we will be importing will consist of three data tables there are relationships links between various objects in those data tables and then uh, once we review the import and the progress of the import uh, we'll take a look at the schema and I will also show you how the same data is structured at the CSV level just so you can understand uh, the relationship between links so quote unquote in CSVs and the relationships in the backendless database to start this process uh, I do have a, a zip file which is world database.zip you can download this file by following the link in the description for this video the process to, Im to import is very straightforward all you need to do is to go to manage and then select import and then in here you will use the browse button that is right next to backendless app anytime you have a zip file that contains multiple CSVs and this one consists of exactly those three CSVs you use this particular browse button you can definitely import files individually let's say if I didn't have the zip file and all those CSVs were just sitting in the in the folder somewhere on your computer then you can use this browse button to select individual CSVs however we will just use the browse button here and select the file so click open and then just click import so this starts the process of import while it is happening, I'll, I need to be pretty quick here. To see the actual progress of the import, you need to switch to the files section and then go to the import directory. You will see that there is a log file right here. Okay, and the log file will have the timestamp that corresponds to the time when it actually started. So you can view this log file right in console just by clicking edit file. Okay, well actually <laughs> import has already finished. Uh, but what I was going to show you is uh, as import is happening what you can do is grab the public link for the file just copy this link right here and then open that link in the browser okay and then as import is happening you can just continue refreshing this page just so the 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 page is updated and you can you can see exactly the progress uh, of, of the import the most important thing to how do you know when the import is finished well first of all an email is going to be sent out to you you will receive an email you will know that import is done uh, but additionally inside of the log file the very last line will if everything goes well will say that importing finished that's kind of the sign that the importing is done that all the data now is in your database there are some uh, errors here more like warnings and those are okay and I will explain why they are okay uh, you can just ignore them for now and you can ignore them when you are going to be doing the import to see the actual data you switch to the data screen and you will see three data tables the, the structure uh, the schema for these data tables is quite straightforward first of all there is a country uh, table in here there are a bunch of properties such as the name population uh the year when the country got its independence a uh, form of government uh there is a link to the capital city which is uh the, the city that uh, essentially the capital of that country and as you can see it is a one-to-one -one relation to the table called city okay since we have a bunch of cities that are uh, not necessarily capitals but the uh, just cities in uh, in various countries there is a relationship that goes from city to the country okay and that's uh, that's also a relationship table that is one to one there is also another table called country language and the country language uh, essentially will contain a, a list of languages that are spoken in uh, in any given country with the percentages of that language presence in that country the name of that language and there is also a one-to-one -one relationship between country language and the country so that's that's the schema to see the actual data if we go to data browser 
you can see that all the data is right here. So for uh, any given country, let's just pick one. In fact, let me show you how to uh, get to the name easier. So you see the name is somewhere in the middle. Uh, you can rearrange columns just by going to the columns drop down, uh, locate name. Okay, so this is this is the name column, and then drag it up to the higher order. So now I put it as the first. So now the very first column is going to be the name of the country. So let's just pick one. For example, Austria. Okay, so the it, the continent is Europe. This is their GNP. Uh, it's a federal republic. There is a head of state. This this data may be uh, outdated, as you can see that uh, for Oceania, uh, actually for American Samoa, it still says that George W. Bush is the president, which of course it is not. So this data is somewhat outdated. But anyway, the the point here is not necessarily the accuracy of the data, but showing how to handle the import and uh, work with with the data. Anyway. For relationships, like for, for uh, relationship to the capital, if we pick Belgium and we just click on this relation, then you'll see that it's going to be uh, Brussels. Okay, so this is the name Brussels right here. Um, and whenever you navigate through a relationship like that and uh, arrive at a, a limited set, in this case just one object, you will also see this little filter icon, okay, which basically says that in here, you're looking only at a subset of data, not, not all of it. And if you click on the little funnel, it goes away, and then all of the data is going to be pulled back. So that's uh, kind of the review of the data that you got with this schema. There are many other videos that will be uh, posted that where we will be using that data. But for now, let me go back to that zip file and show exactly that data uh, as it, as it exists in the CSV files. So for instance, let, let's take a look at the country. Let me open that in Excel. So here we got uh, the same data in Excel. And uh, uh, for all the columns that we saw in, uh, in the database, the very first row will contain not only the name of that column, but the actual data type. So for the data type, which is the object ID, which is basically an ID that identifies a record, you need to put the data type that says string underscore ID all in caps. For data type, which is just a string, you put uh, also the size of that column in the parentheses. So for instance, see the name in country, it is a string, uh, the size of it is 50 characters. And if we go back to console and select country, and go to schema, you see that uh, which one we were looking at, it was the name. So here, if we take a look at the name, it is a string, max length is 50 characters. So all of the data translates to the information that Backhandless uses to define schema. Uh, the most importantly that I wanted to point out is the actual relationship column, okay? So the relationship is a reference for uh, any of these countries to uh, an object or essentially a record in the capital, I'm, I'm sorry, in the city CSV. So the structure of the name of the column is very special. So the, it can consists of multiple elements. The first one is capital. So this part right here, capital, it is going to be the name of the column in this in the country uh, table. Then there is a city, which is the name of the CSV, the name of the table that will contain the related object. And then there is a special keyword, which is back endless, foreign key, one to one. It is, it needs to be in there. All of this is actually documented. It is in our documentation, but I wanted to point out uh, how it is done. So if we take a look at, for instance, here we have Aruba, and the Aruba capital is the record 129 in the city. Um, CSV, uh, so let's open city.csv in Excel. So here's our city Excel. And if we go to record 129, it is going to be the capital of Aruba. In this case, that's the city name, or I'm just stud, I guess. Anyway, so this is, this is how the data is structured. And uh, I thought it was uh, rather important to point out. But at this point, uh, you know how to import and you know how to monitor the progress of the import for, uh, for your backend database. I hope you found it useful. Thank you. And as always, happy coding.